Netflix started a small DVD rental service founded by two friends, Mark Randolph and Reed Hastings. At a point, the company was on the brink of collapse, and they tried to sell their company to Blockbuster, their biggest competitor. Unfortunately for Blockbuster, they rejected the offer to buy Netflix and laughed the two founders out of the room. Fortunately for Mark and Reed, they decided to continue the business, heavily inspired by the success of Amazon and their belief that there was an ample opportunity with the internet. Fast forward many years later, Blockbuster has gone bankrupt, while Netflix has gone on to become a company valued at over $200 billion. But if Netflix is that successful, why are they now in big trouble? To get there, we must start at the beginning of Netflix. Mark Randolph, one of the co-founders, pitched the idea of renting out movies online to his friend Reed, an idea he had written down in his notebook of ideas. At first, they dismissed it due to the high postage costs and the risk of tapes getting damaged in the mail. However, a few weeks later, Reed read about DVDs, a new technology that solved most of the issues of VHS tapes. Seeing that their business model could work better with DVDs, Mark and Reed decided to bet on DVDs becoming the standard and created a website where people could rent them out. They named their company Netflix, a word that was related to both the internet and movies. They took an investment from Mark's mother for capital and she became one of Netflix's earliest investors. They didn't have revenue yet, so they promised their early employees stock options. In the early days of Netflix, Mark, Reed and the team spent months building their website and buying as many DVDs as they could to offer their customers every available movie on DVD. Eventually, they finished their website and it was time to launch. On the day of the website launch, the team was nervous about how many orders they would receive because it could go either way. It could be the beginning of a success or the end of a failed company. To increase their chances, the team had earlier infiltrated as many online forums and bulletin boards for movie fans as possible and created profiles on these sites as if they were regular users. After the launch, the team received way more orders than they actually expected, which was good for them. But, to their surprise, most people were choosing to buy DVDs instead of renting them, which could mean their company's end. Customers buying up their DVDs was not sustainable in the long run because Netflix knew that other companies would soon start selling identical DVDs. It was only a matter of time before that would cause their profit margin to shrink fast. To build a loyal customer base, Netflix needed people to start renting more DVDs instead, as this would provide higher profit margins and a business model that was harder to replicate by competitors. Despite the challenges, Netflix revenue in its first month after launching was over $94,000. It was a good figure. One thing was wrong. Most of their profits came from DVD sales. Netflix went on like this for a while, and at a point, Amazon offered to buy them out, but it declined. After declining Amazon's offer to buy Netflix, founders Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph realized that offering both DVD sales and rentals on the same website was too complicated, and decided to focus on DVD rentals alone, while striking a counter-offer with Amazon to take the DVD sales aspect of their business. It was a win-win for both companies. To attract more customers to Netflix, they made a deal with significant DVD player manufacturers to offer free rentals to new customers who entered their player's serial number on the Netflix website. However, this strategy failed, as the promotion turned out to be a disaster, as people abusing the system and only very few customers became regular paying Netflix users. Netflix then came up with a new promotional plan. They decided to offer trend headlines on their platform, and at the time, the biggest headline was Bill Clinton's grand jury testimony. For just two cents, Netflix offered the complete footage of the testimony in DVD format. They even devised a promotional catchphrase, have your two cents on the Clinton testimony. This new promotion strategy worked like a charm, and Netflix exposure widened and they started to get new customers. But it still needs to solve the issue of Netflix struggling DVD rental business model. After the Clinton trial buzz wore off, Netflix continued to struggle with retaining customers, and the deal with Amazon wasn't going well either. 
Reed Hastings was concerned about the company's direction and presented a PowerPoint to fellow co-founder and CEO Mark Randolph, outlining his worries about Mark's recent decisions regarding promotions, hiring and finances. Reed then proposed that he became the CEO, while Mark took on the role of president. Mark initially felt hurt and betrayed, but he eventually accepted the proposal after realizing that Reed's experience and reputation would benefit the company. Even after Reed was appointed CEO, Netflix struggled to attract enough customers to become profitable until Mark had a revolutionary idea that would change the business model. Mark proposed that instead of renting individual movies with due dates and late fees, if Netflix offered a subscription plan, customers would have four DVDs at a time with no due dates or late payments. Customers could swap out DVDs as often as they wanted, providing them with complete flexibility. This single innovative idea seriously shot up Netflix growth and they finally gained so many subscribers generating revenue from repeat customers. Everything looked up for Netflix until the dot-com crash of 1995 that lasted until 2001. The impact was a significant setback for Netflix and funding for internet companies dried up. Netflix was gaining more customers, but they were still small compared to its biggest rival, Blockbuster. To compete with Blockbuster, Netflix needed to invest heavily in growth. They needed to take drastic action before big companies started copying their idea. In 2010, Netflix had its initial public offering, IPO, and the company raised more money by selling shares to the public on the stock market. Netflix made a spectacular debut on the Nasdaq stock market, and the following years saw significant growth for Netflix. At this point, Blockbuster realized their mistake. Netflix was becoming a real threat. To catch up, Blockbuster launched its streaming website with a DVD by mail rental service to catch up. As Blockbuster tried to win back customers by promoting its DVD by mail rental service, Netflix was making good decisions by launching a video on demand service in 2007, allowing people to stream movies and TV shows over the internet. Initially, Netflix's library of content for streaming was small, so they kept their DVD rental subscriptions, but as internet speeds got faster, Netflix eventually ditched DVDs, focusing solely on streaming. By launching the new streaming service, Netflix could expand internationally without shipping anything physical. They also invested heavily in their recommendation algorithm to match users to the right content. While Netflix was proactive about innovation and adapted quickly to technological changes, Blockbuster was reactive and only adapted once it was too late. Blockbuster filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection due to the rise of competition from Netflix and Redbox. Despite its newfound success, Netflix faced various challenges, including a significant customer uproar when it split its DVD and streaming services into separate websites. Netflix, proactive as ever, made another significant change by investing heavily in original content to protect its streaming rights. This investment paid off as Netflix outspent its competitors in Hollywood and many of its shows won numerous awards, but nothing lasts forever. And as the competition in the streaming market increased, Netflix felt the heat. Netflix lost many of its big shows and along with them, a chunk of its subscribers. To deal with their current predicament, Netflix announced plans to crack down on password sharing, introduce a cheaper subscription option with ads and raise prices again to invest in more original content. Users, however, could have taken this news better and it only led to further criticisms and increased subscriber loss. Netflix had also been known to throw money at different new and entirely, frankly, unnecessary shows. Money that their users believe could have been put to better use. Users have also criticized the quality of shows that Netflix is making and the company seemed to be facing hit after hit. The many streaming services that are now available have led to Netflix losing its monopoly. And while that's awful news for Netflix, it's not only Netflix that is being affected by this. It's also also users who now have to subscribe to many different streaming services to keep up with their shows. While Netflix's future is shaky, one thing is sure, this is not the end for Netflix. The company will do what it has always done best, 
focus on doing one thing well and adapting to technological changes. Any more mistakes from Netflix could prove deadly to the company's future, and it would be dramatic to see Blockbuster's last functioning store outlive Netflix. And that's it, so be sure to catch up on our next video featuring more authentic success stories from top brands. The secret formula, the dark truth about Coca-Cola.